Hello and welcome back to Heroic Stats and Any Heroics podcast, uh, hosted, of course, by myself, Stephen Denby, uh, John Partridge, the intern, and uh, Dave Farmer, the man who now loves spiders even more than he used to. Um, if you don't know who I am, uh, you should. I'm the GBHL rankings officer. I'm also the uh, democratically elected through proportional representation captain of Any Heroics. Uh, no one else here matters. Uh, I guess Dave's quite good at the game. Uh, that's probably well, why he's on here. Ha- When's the uh, rankings getting updated, Stephen? The people. Uh, I, I literally was doing it before the podcast, oh, yeah. so. Okay. Well, yeah, I can send you a screenshot. By the time this comes out, no, I believe Ooh. it. Ooh. Yeah, I, I haven't done it for a couple of weeks, so. <laughs> I, mm. Yeah, well, people have noticed. <laughs> yeah. You're going to get the Dewey treatment, which is to say, every time I win a tournament, I'm going to be like Dewey. Well, it's going to be you now, but Stephen, when's the when's the rankings update? Yeah, Jamie's been bugging me as well. To be fair, because I yeah, think he's currently he's, second. Yeah, we finished fifth. He wants to he wants to get the screenshot of him up top, which is fair enough. Yeah, we all do that. Um. Anyway, uh, if you haven't listened before, apart from having needless crack with each other, uh, the drug, not the Irish phrase for merriment. Um, what we do here is we uh, look at tournament results for previous weeks. Um, we also do a little bit of hobby chat, uh, a little bit of any other business. Sometimes we've got uh, guest segments. Um, check previous podcasts to see uh, lovely guests that we've had on previously. Um, but first of all, most importantly, we are, of course, affiliated with Firestorm Games. <gasps> um, Great who- value. Great value on all the newest products and all the oldest products as well. Um, I think one of the things that I own from them actually is a really old box of Middle Earth Rangers that I got because I was like, well, this is 20% off. I'll use it at some point, right? Um, yet to be proven right, but it was so cheap that it was definitely worth it. Um, it's a good to have lying around. Link below, also QR code directly in front of your face if you're watching on the videos. Um, what's everyone been up to hobby wise? I've um, done nothing. Uh, you've been on holiday. Arnor is so. still, yeah, I went on holiday. I have yeah. got, though, a new fancy airbrush from Harder and Steinbeck, Ooh. who kindly sponsor the uh, podcast. <laughs> um, so thank you very much to them for sending it to me in exchange for money, but that's irrelevant. <laughs> yes. Um, I've actually been uh, basically procrastinating uh, doing my Thrandall's Halls. Um, but they are now fully cleaned up. Uh, the gaps are filled. And it's all at my girlfriend's house ready for, not this weekend, but the weekend after, when we're going to be painting everything, hopefully. So mm, fun. That'll be a fun hobby montage video. Yeah. You cracking the whip while Monica no, rushes gen- them out. Genuinely, yesterday, uh, in, in the morning, she was like, do you have any more models I can I can prepare? And I was like, what? She's like, I want to prepare some more models. And I'm like, but I thought we were playing video games. And she's like, yeah, but in the loading screens. And I'm like, I mean, I find there's a way. Yeah. Oh, that's a banger. What a great track. It came, that came up on a Spotify, an unrelated Spotify song radio of mine um, the other day. And I was like, what? (laughs) What's this doing here? It is great, though. Dave's BDSM Um, playlist. Not even. It's just, it was like, uh, it was like a folk playlist. And it just pops up and I'm like, I mean, kind of. Uh, hobby-wise, I have done nothing. I was going to, I, I did a Kung Fu Panda marathon with my girlfriend uh, before going to see the, the new one in the cinema on the weekend, uh, the long weekend. But uh, I just didn't get around to actually doing any of it. I was going to do a similar sort of thing, prep up some models. I've got a bunch that are unbuilt that I've been meaning to get done. A lot of Iron Hills Dwarves that I've been looking at and thinking of doing for a while. I even bathed the spears to straighten them out the last time I got them out to build but then I never actually glued them together mm. which is you know kind of the most important step I think because I'm not that interested in Iron Hills Dwarves at this exact moment I'm now I'm you know spider queens that kind of thing it's a lot a lot of stuff going on you know my brain's a different place I'm really enjoying list building as well at the minute I think winning um maybe made me a little bit excited for tournaments again which is fun you know um, and then a couple of things transpired, which means I can now, I think I can now go to Ali King's City of Kings tournament in a month. I think it is. It's beginning of May. So that I now was like, oh, another tournament I can list build for. 
so anyway that's it i've not done any hobby but i'm excited about hobby so there you go right speaking of tournaments should we look at our first one for the weekend do we do that we look at tournaments it's been so long sometimes so our first event this weekend was a wizard is never late but is slightly early for april held on march 31st it was gbhl 90 in reading ran by chris Ryder. attendees played four games at 500 points uh most sporting was won by elliot claude again oh Uh, boy so that's two on the bounce for him in tournaments uh that's outrageous time now to appear on the podcast yeah Uh, Best I think he was busy accepting awards. <laughs> was um, Alex Markuchowicz or Alec Uh We didn't get any photos despite two members of Any Heroic being there. We um, literally asked them as well. I reminded them the, the day before yeah. or like two days before. It was very sporting of Elliot to not take a no. picture, I'll say no. that. So, but so I heard he did get four votes out of four, which is outrageous. Yeah. But... He also had this to say about the tournament. It was an absolute banger. Shout out Chris for being a top bloke. And uh, also shout out Chris for messaging me while we were doing the podcast last time, being like, would you like to shout out the podcast? And I missed the message. So apologies, Chris. Um, (laughs) Chris is a lovely bloke. Um, He's very fluffy and he's very beardy and he's very baggy, which if you know what is long shanks. Is he a bear? No, he's he's, he's beardy fluff bag on long shanks. Um, I oh, I see. Right. Okay, now I get what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were so, describing him physically for a second then, and I was like, what? Ooh. Huh? He so, looks kind of like that picture, except with hair and taller. Yeah, this is the artist rendition of... You don't know how King. tall this guy is. He might have extremely <laughs> long feet. Yes, an extremely long head and beard. Yeah, that, that could right. be a giant. Anyway, imagine a really nicely painted dwarf army. There was a there was a really cool special rule that um Chris did for this tournament, which was you could pick a scenario if your list contained both a wizard and a baggins, um, which I think only one person did. Um, what scenario did they pick? Do we know? I I don't know. It's if only we had people who were at the tournament who could have told us these things. <laughs> God, that would have been useful. Yeah. Right. Well, uh, spoiler alert: whoever took a baggins and a wizard did not come third. Third was Callum Rutter bringing Helm's guard. So he's got Helm hammer hand on a horse with a warrior of Rohan with banner and throwing spears, eight warriors with throwing spears and shields, nine royal guard with throwing spears. And then for a second hero, he's got a king's huntsman with two riders of Rohan, one Rohan outrider on foot and two outriders on horse. The king's huntsman is a pretty um, lit choice. I Yeah. Th- it, it's situationally good, but uh, as soon as your lines hit, it's not good anymore. So for my money, this is a whack choice. I like the King's Huntsman though. I do think it's it's underrated. I, I would actually consider it as a... So, so when you take this up to 550 slash 600, you need to have a third hero. And at that point, rather than have, I'd always have a captain instead of the King's Huntsman here because March is so good and you have to have a second hero because you can't just have one war band that doesn't work. Um, uh, I would say that uh, getting the what was I saying? God, I lost my head for a second there. Oh yeah, getting the uh, getting the shooting in. They have a longbow, um, which is uh, uh, strength three. So it's an elf bow essentially. They hit on three plus, which is decent. Uh, the two the two plus in the way thing is really nice. Like it's like very budget Legolas, and you can't shoot into combat unfortunately, but. For shooting out mounts, he is very good actually, and he has two might to spend on on that. What I would say is, what I found with Helm Hammerhand is because he's fight five, you really do benefit from having a might caddy in the battle line who isn't him, even though because he's going to have to start using his might eventually, and he does have mighty hero, which is great. But if you ever fight anything that's fight five or enemy heroes, you basically have to be using your free might to strike, even though you want to be doing free heroic combats. So. It's just really good value to be um, having a captain. I wouldn't bother giving the captain anything special, though. I wouldn't even give him a horse because they don't get the they don't benefit from the helm hammer hand fight value bonus. Um, yeah, you'd probably scrape the points to maybe give them a shield, but even then, if you give them anything, you'd give them a shield. But yeah. I wouldn't bother for heavy armor personally. If I was doing this list now, I wouldn't give them anything. Like 
throw a royal guard behind them for five five, use the two attacks and piercing strike to get some strength five if you need it. But yeah. they're not good unless you're playing fog of war or assassination. They're not, you know, you don't have to worry about them at all. So you can just chuck them in there, use them as a yeah. as a beater. Um, I like how Ham hands at five hundred in particular. I think he's great. I do think this has got too much cavalry in it. I think, um, having four mounted archers. Well, I guess maybe he's maybe he wanted to play a sort of a skirmishy kind of game. He's got like a battle line warband with helm, and he's got an archer warband with king's huntsman. Um, I don't know what scenarios they played. Was it veto? No, I don't think so. I think this list could get screwed by bad scenarios, but then I mean, at five hundred, almost anything can. I like the idea. Um, I don't think it's as strong as just making your battle line as big as possible. Uh, with March, because then you can just jog up the, with a couple of. Uh, I'd keep a couple of mounted royal guards. Um, for emergencies and for grabbing objectives because they do get fight five when in six of helm but yeah i i think that i mean that that battle line is very deceptively shooty as well that's 18 throwing spears um which is quite a lot <laughs> and if you have a march you can just run into their face and go woo, 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 chuck 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 um y yeah the throwing spear spam at this point so it's kind of like a yeah. uh a budget version of defenders of helm's deep and that you I don't think it's a budget of version. Spin. Well, I think no, it's because a... because at five hundred well, points. Many... Well, yeah, I guess. I mean, at five hundred points, I guess defensive helm deep, you're going to have about twenty-two spears and elves. But this has helm hammer chad, who can run people over for fun and absolutely butchers dwarves, even vault wardens, with laughable ease, um, which is cool. But yeah, I mean, he's not super great. I think five hundred to six hundred is basically the only points level where he's worth a damn. But I really like him. I like him. I love his model. Uh, and I actually have him, and I want to use him another time, but, you know, we'll see. Right. Let's look at our second place list. We've got Richard Spencer bringing Azor's Hunters, 39 mm -hmm. models. He's got Nazuk, who was the leader with a Felwag, eight orcs with bow, three orcs with nothing extra. Yasneg with Felwag and a Lance, leading one Felwag, four Hunters with bow, and seven normal Hunters. Finally, he's got Fimble on a Felwag with a Felwag in the warband, six Hunter Orcs, one Hunter Orc with Banner, and four more with Bow for a total of 18 bows. What do we think of this one? That's horrible. <laughs> it's Hunter Orcs be Hunter Orking. It's probably one of the best possible lists to use at this points level. Yeah. Um, I, I'm not surprised from, from, from Richard. I know he's pretty much said he's like, I want to win stuff. Uh, he's a bit like you, John. I think he's pretty aware of what's good and wants to use that. Um, so yeah, that's this is good. I what I would say is I sort of feel like maybe it's difficult to find the points there because there's no there's really no edges you can trim. I'd like Nazog to have a uh, have a uh, amount wow. if possible. Yeah. But the problem is if you drop something, you then have to drop bows or you're dropping the banner. But if you drop the banner, you're not maxing your points. You could drop. Ah, uh, I see what you mean. Yeah, you have no, to get like, precisely nine points worth of stuff. Yeah, because so for you need ten for you need ten for the the warg for Narzog. You drop you drop the uh, AFL warg infantry troop just because it's like cool that gets you the warg. You still have it; it's just on your mountain. You're not losing a break point or a bow limit, but you do still have to drop a bow because you've got your one point over. Um, I think this is a, on balance a reasonable choice. I think if you, I presume Narzog is the leader, yeah, um, and just praying for no. No contest. Although even contest, I mean, he's an old captain with three might. You can probably force a kill or two onto him. Contest yeah, the other two can more run diversion, has, I think. The other two can yeah. run diversion on the enemy leader. Mm -hmm. um, which at 500 points, you shouldn't be running into any helm hammer hands or anything like that. Yeah, there's no <laughs> way. <laughs> well, um, well, yeah, you know. If a helm hammer hand plays against this list at um, contest, he just wins. But I presume they didn't play each other at contest. Well, you've or got a chance can... to shoot his horse out, but but true. Yes. But if he if he if he volu if he's smart and he voluntarily dismounts, he's laughing at you. Also, yeah. he has horse lord, so it's not a great odds. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, yeah. I mean, yeah. I like this. This, this is walking. this is probably one of the best possible lists at five hundred points. Yeah, I agree with that. Thirty nine models. Me, let me know that. Down. Strength four is insane. <laughs> I mean, you could tell this is OP, John. Look at it. Eighteen bows, nearly forty models. It's got the three wags for recon as well. Three didn't wild, me at the GP. Two mounted heroes. Yeah, that's 600, right? <laughs> it's lacking March, right? But you've got uh, 40 yes, models. Who gives yeah, a shit? It, well, exactly. You you can play around it. 
Uh, and you, yeah, you have five fast models and you have shooting supremacy against almost everything. Pretty much the only thing this doesn't have that it could have, hypothetically, is the Warhorn. But I agree that I think the banner is better than the Warhorn at 500. Yeah. And You're less likely to walk into terror. So. Unlikely yeah. that you'll come up against much terror. And even if you do, you've got plenty of stuff to charge. For Ooh. our first place list. Whoa, nice segue. Which John. was from friend of the channel, number, probably number two or three super fan, I reckon, Stuart McLean. Uh, definitely up there, joint with Liam Smith and the only JP. Uh, Stuart has brought Mordor Serpent Horde, that combo that everybody loves, 36 models. He's got a very budget Witch King. Yeah, it is budget. So three might, one fate, no extra will, no crown, no, not no even horse. a poor little horse, uh, leading oh. 16 black numbs, one wild rider. Then he's got Suladan, the Serpent Lord, uh, with an armoured horse, leading nine Haradrim warriors with bow and spear, six warriors with spear, and two Serpent Riders. See, this is a... This is a. I think this is a fascinating list because it's so like I see what he's going for. I think it's interesting. I think taking the Witch King without the crown, without everything, like you have ten, you have ten will to play with, which is enough for two or three spells. But bearing in mind that you have to be committing a bit more than you normally would the witch king because you haven't taken the crown you lose the combat power but with a list like this he's got 36 models it's pretty good got the infantry he's got the the troop cavalry and he's got Siladan. i would imagine you'd make the witch king the leader on this one uh mm -hmm. and then again just throw Siladan in so i think that's what i would do again just gambling on contest not coming up because contest sucks for that but other, yeah. everything else is vastly better because the witch king isn't that easy to kill although one fate that's brave you know, two wounds go through, he just dies. I'd drop a Serpent Rider to a Warg Rider and then maybe spend that five points on the second Fate point. It's not five. Uh, you, oh. That's not five points. Do you mean a Serpent Rider to a... A Serpent Rider to a Warg Rider. Oh, wait, I see. Yeah, oh, it's 26 knots. Oh. oh, my God. <laughs> Serpent so Riders trip. are 13 points. They're very, very good, but they're not, so they're not 16 points. Um, It's very, very trim, yeah. I, I Honestly, looking at this, I'd almost... I guess the magic is like the, the sort of the X factor. So I wouldn't necessarily change that, but I'm kind of looking at it. I almost feel like, could you maybe do this with Dalamir instead? Mm. Dalamir and throw some crossbows in. Um, that gives you a bit more shooting. I agree though. I like the Witch King. And if you're willing to take the risk, I mean, you can be a Mike Caddy and or mild caster. And at 500, you're pretty unlikely to run into other wraiths. Like wraiths or don't Legolas. get taken that much. Or Legolas, although Legolas would make this very sad. Assuming yeah. the Witch King is the leader, but I assume he is because I think that would make more sense. I like the list. I, yeah. I think it lacks it lacks a lot of uh, strength. Four it doesn't have any apart from the War Rider, um, and I guess you've got Lances and Sildan. But um, uh, I think just having thirty six models and a massive front line of Black Numbs with some Cav, yeah, Steve, sixteen Black Numbs is got March so as well because Sildan does bloody everything. That's why it's so good. I mean, this list really shows kind of everything the witch king can do doesn't it like having a a three might 10 will one fate kind of 18 warriors with him caster for 90 points if you could just take that as a profile you probably would it's it's yeah. different to the normal build of the witch king and it's probably a bit fragile as your leader but it's still still really good and just shows kind of how good the Witch King is. Cracked. Yeah, I mean, the Witch King is extremely flexible. Mm -hmm. um, being able to run him like this and still have it be strong, it's kind of funny, and kind of crazy that that's so, you know, relevant. The, the Mordor and Joy me is, like, sad that there's no trackers, but at the same time, like, it just there's no way to improve the list other than getting stats on the Witch King. And then you're losing Black Numenorians. I, I think that's a fascinating list. I've never seen anything quite like that at 500. Mm. Other than that's I really once cool. built a list like this with basically I was trying to make Witch King Spider Queen work at well, Mordor Spider Queen work at 450. And you pretty much have to take the most budget, budget Witch King like this kind of build <laughs> um, to even make it work. But then you're like, ah, I run into mild shooting, everything falls apart because my Spider Queen just dies. <laughs> 
anyway that's a nice list good job Stuart. yeah right let's look at our second tournament of the weekend fellowship of glasgow gbhl glasgow. 90 uh uh-huh. ran out geek, greek retreat geek retreat geek. sorry it could be greek <laughs> uh Catholic thomas sherlock was retreat. the ta uh 18 players played 500 points um four games across the day 500 points again just in case uh, you needed that point really hammering home it was random missions but our fantastic report on the ground david reed let us know which missions they played so it was lords of battle hold ground recon and capture and control most sporting was won by ross clark and best painted was taken by ian young's isengard so we've got one blurry photo uh I think there's some very nicely painted uh, generation shift bases there. Oh, it's got um, the old uh, giant, giant uh, Warhammer giant piece for that objective, the skeleton uh, sign thing. Yeah. That was a, a, a sprue piece from the old Warhammer giant kit. There's loads of like classic ones, like the cow and uh, the peasant <laughs> running away. Like Ooh. that kit had so many of those in it. it. Had loads of little birds. It's got like a, a cage crazy like just i always like to see that sort of thing cropping up don't like to see ballistics quite so much though those things can piss off yeah they can get in the bin it's fine dave you're changing the meta right yeah blind light that people bring them out bring your blinding lights don't bring your crossbows Mm -hmm. uh so let's look at our third place it was a joint third place we'll have to check the rankings officer if that's allowed um but (laughs) Uh, James Gilray and Michael Wetton were tied on VPs, I believe. Uh, I don't actually know whose list was who, so tell us in the comments. One of the lists was Erebor Reclaimed, 25 models, Old Man Dane, four Iron Hills with crossbow, six Iron Hills with spear, two Iron Hills with just shields, and then Gloin the Dwarf, Champion of Erebor, Gimli's Daddy, Erebor, yeah, Champion of somewhere. (laughs) Um, Three Iron Hills with crossbow, two Iron Hills dwarfs, five Iron Hills dwarfs with spear, and one goat rider. So that was one of our 500 point lists. The other was Grim Bayorn, 11 Bay awnings with axe, four Bay awnings with bow. I love I that the Bay awnings player hasn't taken Bayorn. I don't. I was about to say, I think that's just worse. No, no, I think it's worse, but it shows creativity in the list building process. Do you think it's worse? Yes, it is worse. 100%, yeah, because the bears are what makes the list good. Well, fifteen Bjornings is pretty solid, but five Bjornings and two bears is better. Yes, Bjorn is actually good in that legion. Oh, you sorry, you mean taking only one? Well, bear there are literally two both. options. Yeah, there are two options yeah. when you run Bjornings. One is uh, below um, seven hundred points. Yeah. The option is. Well, I mean, actually, no, below, sorry, below 500 points, sorry. The option is either Grimbjorn and a full warband of Bjornings or Bjorn, Grimbjorn, and then a smash ring of Bjornings. So in that case, it'd be five. With a so if, great bow. if you're only taking one bear, do you always take Grimbjorn first, right? I probably would, because he's a bit less, he doesn't have the downsides that Bjorn has, although Bjorn yeah, does have did. fight eight. Yeah, um, that's what I, th- I thought Stephen was saying. I thought Stephen was saying it was wrong to take Grimbjorn. No, no. I, I think, I think yeah. you should take both bears. Although I understand why some, sometimes people want to just have the, the all the Bjornings because they want to play with them, which is fair. I just think it's yeah. slightly stronger. Having said that, actually, 15 Bjornings is very hard to deal with for most armies at um, 500. Like, I, like, if you're in a straight fight, that would absolutely pants this dwarf list. It would just rip it to yeah. shreds um, because they just walk through dwarves. Yeah, um, I mean, you've got You've got a bear banner. You've got you're only you're only ten models or nine models down, like, <laughs> and your models yeah. are just so much better. Well, exactly. Yeah, I mean, if you're in that, terms of like go. wound count, yeah, got, I mean, what thirty three wounds? Decent. Yeah, I mean, it's decent. Although I will say this: this arable reclaim list isn't exactly big numbers either, even at five hundred. Um, Gloin does crazy good work. And I, I I didn't even really clock. I mean, I knew this, but I'd never really thought about it. Gloin is cheaper than Gimli and, and literally better. just better. Yeah. 
He's got well, one way he's one not faith, but it's like, yeah. it's like, hey, Gimli, he's like, you have three attacks or plus one to wound, and Gloin's like, yeah, I'm going to have both and reroll ones. <laughs> yeah. Grow up, grow up, kiddo. This is yeah, how you I argue that Hobbit models aren't OP. I always look at they're Gloin not, in just, Champions of Erebor and Erebor Reclaims, <laughs> and I just think, what a nice profile. Like, yeah, I mean, he does Glo- get absolutely fucked by magic with one will, but yeah. he's only but ninety points. So he's, he, he's yeah, he's fight six, three attacks, three to piercing strike with plus one, so he can go strength five, plus one to wound, three attacks, re rolling ones to wound, d eight to basic, three might. He's got strike. It's like, dude, this guy cooks. He yeah. grinds extremely well. Like he's great to add into a dwarf list when you need another fighter. Like he's not a flashy hero. The dwarf, these dwarf lists tend to lack flashy heroes other than Thorin and Dwalin. Um, but they do just boom, 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 boom. You know, you put him into two guys a turn, he'd probably kill two, one or two a turn reliably, and he's very unlikely to die in return unless your opponent pulls him out with magic and throws Gilgalad at his face or something. But I've literally know, done do that twice like that. with Gloin. <laughs> oh, have you? Well, yeah. I it's one of my favorite uh, things wait, to do wait. with Gloin. I look, I look at him and I'm always like, "You're actually the weak link in the um in the list." Uh, when it comes to magic targeting. Right, let's look at second place. He's been churned up quite a few times on the podcast. It's uh, the Scottish Dynamo, Finley Staniforth. The Scottish from the Dynamo. North. He's taken Easterlings, not the Dragon Emperor. Hey. Um, I believe That's somebody else actually friends. wrote this list for him and Finley just wanted to flex on... Um, the fact that he could take a suboptimal list and still come second. But you didn't win, though, Finley, did you? So maybe you should take good list. Um, he's brought Amda leading three Eastling Warriors with Shield, three Eastling Black Dragons with Pike and Shield, five Eastlings with Pike and Shield, one Dragon Acolyte with an Axe, a Eastling Black Dragon Cataphract, a Eastling Black Dragon Cataphract with Wardrum, and then he's got Brogear leading three Eastling Warriors with Shield, Three black dragons with pike and shield, five Eastling warriors with pike and shield, and one more dragon cult acolyte with an axe. There's no. You know picture. he has an axe. Or are you just assuming that there's a weapon swap? Is uh, I know it's an axe. Well, it could be. It could be flails. It could be yeah. It could be two flails. Fl- flails are really useless, but it would but, be cool. <laughs> thanks to our fantastic on the ground reporter David Reed, I know that they were axes. So Is it because David Reed wrote David the Reed. list for him? Or? So no, this is a funny I... one because I think <laughs> Amda is okay at this point's level specifically. I remember Ben Haslam, I think it was the into 2023. Last year. Yeah, Ooh. he went into the West last year. No, came second into the West last yeah, year. Yeah, he came second with last year. Rutabi and Broger and Max Dark Warbands. And I remember thinking like that I was like, it'd be nice if you could run Amda, because Amda is just a little bit killier. Obviously, Brutabi has Master of Battle potential, but that's basically what this is, but with more frills uh, and less. Um, but it's got a, it's obviously a slightly more points. Into the West is 450, and this is 500. Um, Progo is good. You can make Amda very, very killy if you give him. Uh, yeah, you turn Rath. him into a Spider Queen if you Blade Wrath him, essentially. Or even worse than that if you channel it, yeah. Yeah. This is the only Amda. Can't really see, but he's been turned into a Dragon Knight for Denby. Mm. As he should be. That's the only yeah. good use well, for him, really. I don't think Amda is good, but I like him. I also, worth noting, he counts as a puny three inch banner and doesn't even count as a banner for scenarios. But that does mean you're not going re rollless in a list like this. Dragon Cult Acolytes with axes help a lot. And he's gone quite quite low on, on Black Dragons, but. It's an okay list. I I think this is the thing that when you're not running the Legion, you have to be meager with your Black Dragon upgrades because they yeah. are two points per because you're buying courage even if you don't necessarily want yeah. to. And I guess they're only going up to fight four as well. They don't even get all the way up to five. It's a bit peak. Well, I mean, that's a slings for you. This is why people used to think they were crap. Because they were <laughs> pretty much, or they, they didn't have that 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 four to five step is like the big powerful one as we discussed before. Like five five is where you start being better than the majority of things you run into. Speaking uh, of 
fight four to fight five steps, let's have a look at our winning list. Is it Barney? Another fantastic Yay. segue. Uh, Big Boz himself. So Mark Capewell took 27 Minister of Bottles. He took Boromir, Captain of the White Tower, with the flag, horse and a shield. Five Warriors and Minister of the Shield. Four Rangers of Gondor with spear. Three Guard of the Fountain Court with shield. And a Knight with shield. And then he had Madrill leading five Warriors and Minister of the Shield. One Warrior Minas Tirith with shield and spear, four Rangers with spear, and two Guard of the Fountain Courts with shield. It's another 90 win for Minas Tirith. I mean, that's good on the podium. Yeah, I yeah. mean, I, I think 500 points is a pretty strong point level for them because what exactly is going to deal with Boromir at 500 points? Like, Yeah, even how Hamhan shits the bed here. Well, Boromir just slaps him or yeah, exactly. just kills his army before... Uh, before, well, actually, I mean, Helm, Helm will kill. This is the, this is a good example. Though. Helm will kill this army easy peasy, but he does have to strike every time. And if he has to use his thing for heroic moves, his free might point for heroic moves, he then runs into Fountain Court, who are like, "Yeah, you kill us on fours, but we have the same fight value as you." That's and a you nice boss you've got there, Mister Helm. Well, exactly. Yeah, you have to. You then have to strike to reliably kill two models. While Borm is like, oh, "I'll just throw a combat because I've got nine might." So actually, nine in that context, nine might fight five ends up being a lot more than Helm's five might with an infinite store, even with the free heroic combats. Because against a list like this, you can't do free heroic combats, or at least I mean, if you can, but you're you're playing a dangerous game doing so because you could just lose your horse, and then if you do, Boromir will just run through your army too quickly. So, yeah, yeah, it's tough. It's a good list, very basic, um, pretty much like. There's not a lot to say about it other than this is a Boromir list. Um, Madril enables him in all the ways I like. I like Madril here. I like Madril because he's cheap, but he has a bow. He gives you the march. He gives you a little bit of protection in like Maelstrom if you need it. And then it enables Boromir to use all of his might on heroic combats just to make sure you are killing stuff as fast as you need to be. Yeah, and so you, you have a to. massive numbers advantage because your models are dying slowly. Boromir is rampaging through. Yeah, you've got okay shooting. Like you're not sh out shooting hunter orcs or elves, but yeah. nine bows, it's all right. It's all right. Yeah, you got some might in there as well. What I would say is this is this kind of list would definitely get uh, painfully hurt by fighting um, uh, Stuart's list mm -hmm. because you you you're like while you have a fight value advantage, you they have about ten numbers on you. You can't really get into a shooting war because they have the same amount of bows and, you know. I think... Uh, and also, um, the Witch King can take away Boromir's horse very easily. I so. still think this list does well into that list. It does, On okay. the basis I wouldn't, of, I wouldn't say as soon well. as you've killed Black Numenorians, you're fighting defense four men instead. Although so, I yeah, suppose you could... There are, there are 16 Black Numenorians, though. The battle line will be yeah. vast and wide. <laughs> Yeah, okay, fair point, fair point. No, I forgot about that there were 16 what's, of them. Yeah, I mean, the that's general... the thing, 500 points. 16 is a lot. It's a lot, what's, 800, it's more than I take. What's the general gist for kind of list building minister? If you try and take a third Rangers with Spear so for that shooting threat? I a would always, minister if you're Warriors, running Boromir, yeah. I would always try and max out Rangers with Spear. Yeah, always, Rangers are really good. The yeah. fight five is crucial and the spears are crucial and the, the bows give you the option of having a shooting war that isn't yeah. horrendous. It, you probably won't outshoot most things with a third rangers, even with Madril, just because anything that's going to try and shoot you probably has better shooting and or crossbows, which will beat you because you win them on sixes and they win you on fours. I, um, I, I think the list tip, tips should always be start with Boromir and Madril. If you're not taking Boromir, I think Madril's almost always an auto-include. In Minister he's very good. He's, I like Mandrill. He's really good. And yeah, even when he's out so of cheap. might, even when he's out of might, the same as I was saying earlier about the the, the uh, Rohan captain, it's like, cool, Mandrill with a ranger behind him is three attacks to win the fight with a reroll, strength four at the yeah. front, you know. He can faint because he's fight four and his ranger buddy behind him is fight five, you know. It's just that little bit of mojo, like two attacks, strength four heroes, they help a lot in this kind of list when you're worried then about you take two killing two six at 800 points and nuke the Dragon Emperor. I'm not sure how we got there. <laughs> at 800 points. Like, trebuchet siege weapon lists are a 
not the one. <laughs> they exist. I don't rate them that highly. Yeah. Right. Let's have a look at our meta for the year so far. Me too. So everyone's favorite graph shows us GBHL 100 podiums and any factions with two or more 90 podiums. Meta is pretty spread out in the moment. There's a whole bevy of lists kind of with only one 90 podium. So they got cut off. Once we've got more hundreds, we'll, we'll split the graph a bit more. So still leading the pack. We've got Isengard, Riders of Theoden. We've got Dark Denizens and Mirkwood, who are now on three total podiums. Uh, one of them was the Chittery Man himself, David. Uh, Army of Lake Town dominating kind of 90s. Minas Tirith doing really well at 90s as well. Um, both have five, yeah. Yeah, both have five. five Mordor s- starting to creep up. It's got kind of three total podiums now. Maybe we'll slowly start seeing a bit of a resurgence for it as kind of some of the tournament points levels get I'm higher. Quite, I'm quite surprised that Mordor took, what was it, 500s before it came, got on the podium. That surprises me. It's, it's the points level, level though, right? Yeah, but I mean, Mordor is good at all points levels. Not great at small points levels, I'll give you that, but it's not bad either. But yeah, I agree. I, I, agree. I guess I, on that level, like it becomes much easier to just build a strong model based list at you know a slightly larger point. So I'll give you that. Well, hopefully, after City of Steel this weekend, there'll be two more Mordor uh, lists on the podium, Dave, won't there? No, I'm taking um, Lothlorien. Oh, well, we can have two more Mordors and. Uh, a Lothlorien on there. I, I tell you what, nothing would make me happier than <laughs> the three of us podiuming and then just getting to just big ego, big heroic smug uh, next week. Yeah, I think that would just that would be the best. I think uh, that would be the peak. We'd have to stop. We'd, we'd have to stop that. the podcast. My yeah. ego would blow through the walls. <laughs> <laughs> Do we want to talk about our lists for, for City of Steel? I know the Gollum's Gamers have done their fantastic kind of a event prelude but yeah the, the the first list that they reviewed was actually my list um and sam Grant immediately was like is there stanbridge list and i messaged him and i was like you knew it was me did they like you it saw or... me they, they did like it they had some interesting feedback um but i think in general they liked it um but yeah i mean we don't need to review lists here i think that would be unnecessary yeah. if you want to check out the the lists on that inferior podcast go check them out if we're generous, we might throw a link in the description or yeah. something. Yeah, you, you'll you be able to see my list in next week's podcast episode. We don't uh, award the wooden spoon, mate. <laughs> he was well, somewhere best when, it, of course. When, when Dave wins the tournament, you'll be able to see my list. Are you taking identical say? lists? John copied me, yeah. Oh, boo. Oh, is it, is it actually identical? No, it's not identical. It's, it's very similar it's, after I gave Dave the idea identical. for the heroes. John is sure. flippantly remarking there. I want to point out. <laughs> I oh, came that's up with why you were painting Goth I, <laughs> yeah. I have receipts that I I sent that exact list to Ali in February, but uh, go off, King. Well, <clears throat> I sent the list to I in our personal discussions between me and you. I yeah. brought up Goth Mob first. Um, it's fine. Uh, history is written by the winner, Dave. So we'll say whoever does better at the weekend came up with the idea. Sure. So Dave came up with the idea. That's a yeah, brave. That's a, that's a brave way to. But we'll see. I'm a little bit uh, concerned about the amount of Lothlorien. Actually, I think that's quite a challenging matchup for the kind of list that we've taken because you don't really get any bonuses and you lose out on fly value and you lose out on magic ability. Not not doomed, but it's tough. I've played that. Like Lothlorien was always one of the hard like. Lists for Barndor. I know it has this. This this has the same weaknesses. Like, um, they have a pretty solid basis to beat you. They have something. The main thing they don't have is strength four or anything like that. Like Haldir isn't exactly a beater, you know. And he has to be careful because if he does fail to resist something, you will just kill his ass. Brute force it with double race. Like you can do, but I mean, he can just double six. With his magic resistance. Yeah, it'd be a shame if um, the Lothlorien list also got a free resolve every turn. 
yeah that's the other thing <laughs> having said that though it just depends on scenario yeah as with everything you can't like we could sit here and talk about it for hours hmm. um it's but Clarence scenario is the largest the largest factor but yeah that that is not a matchup i'm particularly relishing however another common list is angmar another one is isengard and mordor should be pretty comfortable in both of those because shade angmar isn't that scary for mordor no do you think gothmore's good in the mordor mirror yeah, he is, yeah. If yeah, especially if they've got nummies. Him, because they'll have Black Numenorians and mm. I mean if they don't have Black Numenorians, your line will just beat the crap out of theirs anyway. And if they do have Black Numenorians and they don't have Gothmog, you have Gothmog who kills them quite easily. Obviously it's... they'll probably just transfix him. Like if we're playing a mirror match, it would be very, very silly. I it's think really in the, awkward um... for the final round when we're playing for the mirror. And then you draw and I Tournament. jump over the top of you guys, so you get <laughs> second, third, I get first. Before mid table mediocrity for everybody involved. Listen, I'm going four and two on the weekend and there ain't nothing anybody can do to stop me. <laughs> I think I'll either go five and one or two and four. <laughs> one of the two. Depends how much we drink in the party house on Friday night. John, I don't think you should drink anything on Friday night after last time. Yeah, the GP was the GP was a mess. That was a rough Saturday morning. You were whacking down that wine like nobody's business. <laughs> John, yeah. uh, put the photo of you in the GP hall here. You mean the 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 one where it looks like I'm naked, but I wasn't actually naked? Yes, that one. No, we won't put that. Up. I've got a career to protect. Oh shit! Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> might have to. Maybe I'll edit that out. Yeah, maybe beep that. That's fine. Yeah, probably not. I was not naked in that photo. No, you weren't actually. No, no I was wearing pants and shorts. Right, moving swiftly on to everyone's favourite part of the pod, uh, viewer comments. Um, so I think the first comment at the top of the list was a lovely reply from Into the West podcast, who viewers from last week will remember uh, podiumed. Did he win the whole thing? No, he no, came he second. second. Oh, the Bolgan, cool. Bolgan Hunters. Was it was, it yeah, was Richard so. specifically. Yeah, so Richard has written, uh, appreciate the list review, a bit surprised it was received well from your group. New Army for me and many of the top players here seem to doubt his capabilities. Hunter Orcs at high points as well as Azog's Legion are rarely seen as a highly competitive pick, but I'm quite happy with how it played for me though. Uh, also, the bats are underrated. Insane mobility. Uh and then there's a reply to that comment. Big fan of the Warbats, especially with Azog and Bulbs. They help get to Magic Casters. So they're usually in the back line and out of combat. perfect for the Pluck Rule. Uh, yeah, thank- the Pluck pluck Rule is very good, I would say. Um, y- that, yeah. that, that does also get better with more bats. Um, I always just think... I'm, I'm someone who likes to max up my battle line as much as possible personally so i tend to find that overdoing things like bat swarms or war bats or ca- cavalry models is a is an easy trap to make your battle line weaker but also give your opponent easily played with pieces um because war bats are easily compelled and killed it's my feeling but then also like it depends on your meta if magic isn't super common then they run rampant and as you say they can be mean to galadriels or ring wraiths behind the lines or on foot Thank you for the comment, Richard. We are all available to do some lovely across the pond podcast crossovers. Dave, if you want someone who knows what they're talking about. Stephen, if you want somebody for his good looks. Me, if you want someone to... who's likely to be awake at the hour required. Yeah. On Only if I'm on nights. Yeah. Um, Carson Howard, big fan of the pod, says, of all the ways I've introduced my friends in how to play MESBG, Battle companies has been the way that got them to stay. I believe it's because it's your company. He calls his Moria Battle Company the Slip Blade Brigade. Their whole goal is to be recognised by the Black Shields. And the intern cuts me off. Yeah, Battle Companies is sick. I think we talked about it uh, a couple of episodes Yeah, we were ago. saying that it was the... Stephen was saying it's his favourite way to play the game, introduce yeah. people, uh, It was, which was also a reply to another comment of Carson's where he said he was able to play a little bit. So uh, it's nice to have that. Yeah, Maybe the stag tournament is battle companies. I've never played allowed, battle companies. You're allowed to do battle companies for an 80. The the real problem with battle companies, and I say this as someone who's played about six battle companies campaigns, is that 
certain battle companies roll over the rest of them like nobody's business because you when you're getting reinforcements if one of the reinforcements is an elf or on a special table you roll a six you get a rivendell knight and the other company gets a goblin warrior yeah issue or mm-hmm. they'll have done harrow rangers Iron Hills Dwarves, the list goes heard, on. Yeah, I was going to say, I've heard the Rangers is completely broken. It, the Rangers is especially bullshit. But... So mm. I will play those then. John, gla- reading glasses on, carefully perusing the power level, <laughs> netlisting battle companies like nobody's <coughs> business. As if I get to pick what I took to my own stag tournament. Yeah, um, specifically, wouldn't. I went and checked uh, Carson Howard's uh, finish of his comment, which was like, Five additional words is eventually become kings slash the ruling faction in Moria. Um, get a groblog. Yeah, all of them get get a bunch of groblogs. <laughs> so all of your guys can have mithril crowns. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Um, Ogitomo says what sounds like a challenge. You must do worse than that to clean out the Aussie viewers. Yeah, I mean, I I, I take this as a big compliment. We're saying, like, the Aussies love us so much that even Stephen's horrible Aussie racism couldn't drive them off. I, I, do, actually have I, cous- I do actually have Australian cousins. Well, that yeah. makes it fine, then. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I've, I've got a reason to go down there, um, although I yeah, will immediately yeah. be lynched by the MESBG <laughs> community. Nah, it's all right. Horrible thing. Probably, they'll, they'll just make you play Kylie in a best out of seven. Oh, God. I don't fancy going zero and seven at all. <laughs> <laughs> I'd only be zero and four. That's what best of works. Oh, yeah, shit. Uh, um, the only series. JP1 comments, uh, the exact word something random. Yes, bonus points if you write the word something random. Pedantry is encouraged around here. And he provides, or she provides the timestamp for exactly well, when that was said. You know, the word for like he or she is just they. It's one word and it fulfills all. Handy. Yeah. Um, he or she is easier to style out when you've started saying he already, because you may or may not know who this person already is, and I'm pretending that you don't. Yeah. Well, as, However, as the first person to comment what was said and comment exactly... That's true. I did say... We will send them a prize... And yeah. we will make sure there are significant bonus points. We'll we'll send you something good. We'll send you something good. Maybe you will get. Maybe we should send them something airbrush <laughs> for Hyder and Steinbeck. Maybe you'll get some Lolcana decks from Seventh City. That'd be crazy. Oh, do you think the only? JP Why are we? Like <laughs> I um I like that. <laughs> I love that you've included the non- the non bread comment as well, even though it was pretty obvious what they meant. You're like, you know, just in case people saw this. Uh, Robert Stevens, 3847, comments asking, what is your ultimate takeaway meal? He says, mine is chicken d- down sack with pilau rice, tikka chi and cheese naan. Uh, and then he clar- clarifies he means naan bread and not someone's naan, which I think is a <laughs> very sweet thing to say, especially when you yeah. can edit the comments. Yeah. Um, uh, my favorite meal is uh, Pepe's Puri Piri chicken. As a takeaway, it's just absolutely slaps um they're they're all over the place they're in birmingham bristol london etc um yeah. there's some mid ones here in bristol but there was one that used to be a minute down the road from where i lived in uh birmingham yeah sometimes oh, dangerous it, sometimes it's just it's like situations can make it a classic so for me i have two takeaways if i want something big and heavy that i'm like like two go-to's i'll get a um, if I was something nice, it'll be like a cocoa, um, cocoa rice bowl, sweet and sour chicken is amazing for the really good value for the money as well, in my opinion. In this era, anyway, like in the modern era of takeaways, it's good value. Uh, in terms of if I want something kind of grubby and dirty and just selfishly for me, if I'm going to eat in my gaming hovel, it would be a KFC Zinger Burger. Yeah, and they're never nice either. The chips are disgusting, but sometimes that's just what you want. No, KFC KFC chips are now good because they've got that sugary, salty. No, but, but when you get them delivered, they're very oh, rarely okay, actually yeah. good. Yeah, they're, they're like good. soggy and grim, but in a sort of filthy and delicious kind of way. I yeah. I'd like to shout out KFC when you can get the six mini fillets for six pound. No, ten by KFC, ten mini John. fillets for. Maybe after this, this the, <laughs> yeah, uh, I was gonna say, you get like 10, 10 milli fillets for six pounds. I remember, actually do you remember player. when 
you were going to the one day 100 last year and i had a ticket for it and i was like you know what fuck this so i gave it to you or i sold it to you or something yeah and you came and slept at my house so jim wiggins could come and pick you up and you ordered a 20 piece mini fillet bucket or something and i was like oh cool and you're like you're like oh yeah this is all for me <laughs> yeah i was like do you want anything as well Stephen? do you want me to order you something I was just it's like to clarify that if you're ordering enough food yeah. for two people, you're like, no, this is just for me. Sorry, be clear. Yeah. Um, that was an interesting drive. I believe Jamie almost got you killed. I was too sleep deprived to remember it. To be honest, I I was I was in a different car watching the thing happen, but it was a little closer than I would have liked. Um, although shout out Jamie Wiggins, he's generally a very safe driver. But yes. that was a scary moment to watch from a different if, car. If you live anywhere near Bristol and you ever need a lift anywhere, Jamie Wiggins will probably offer it to you because he's yeah, that he, kind of dude. He loves driving people to places. In another world, he'd be a chauffeur. Um, yeah. He definitely doesn't go faster than the speed limit. <clears throat> um, our next comment is from Brick Wan saying, lol, Brit's still salty and calling literal divine intervention cheating. Cheers from Argentina. It's all right. I'll just enjoy uh, watching that on the Falkland Islands, bitch. You mean Las Malvinas, don't you? Same thing. Is it Las Malvinas? <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I mean... Continuing. Sure. <laughs> continuing just trying to alienate everybody in the Southern Hemisphere. International <laughs> nice, to, nice to see you too, uh, Brick One. Um, wow. Well, yeah. Hola, que paso? Uh, me oh, llamo Esteban. Not. Vivo en las afueras de Kingsbridge. Un pequeño. <laughs> I still remember my GCSE Spanish. Isn't that sad? I you'd, don't. You'd be back. David Clubley would be embarrassed. Mm. Uh, yeah, continuing our incitement of hatred from other nations. Wiley Kylie <laughs> uh, says, you're certainly talking a big game, but I'm curious if you can back it up. I have at least one full team of Aussies heading to Articon this year, maybe a second Anzac team if the Kiwis show up. Perhaps a wager to see who places higher. That is, of course, if you're not scared to put some skin in the game. Ah, what kind of wager? Mm -hmm. That's fun. This, uh, this is Kylie, in case you couldn't tell by the name. Um, yeah. I, I like that this podcast is doing the rounds on Australia. Um, clearly posting it to the page. Is, I never saw any interaction with it, but evidently people were watching it. So I'm, I'm excited I'm, for that. Hi every one of my posts is just trying to bait the mods into kind of finally banning me for no well, Australians are really good for not banning people because they they are the exiles from the great throwing spear yeah, war, a mean it, war. unless unless <laughs> you bring up tom bombadil and inches at which yeah. point they will throw you out faster than babies and bathwater combined yeah um i um, would say that that was my favorite uh hypocritic my hypocritical moment of 2023 was the whole yeah. bomb bombardment of disaster <laughs> occurring in the australian uh, page but you know we're not so different we have a similar attitude we enjoy svg uh we'll definitely destroy you knock on wood uh, I, if i go to article i will gladly take you up on that however uh i don't know if i'm going because i didn't yes. buy a ticket our, pr our problem was, is a lot of the counting... best UK players will be split between different teams, won't they? Yeah, yeah of course. And also, also, um, uh, the problem with uh, going to Articon is, it's, you know, for people who are playing in the GBHL, it's like, it's 100 GBHL points on offer. I would say this year it's different because this changed the scoring, so there's more potential points on offer. But it's like, you could go to Articon or you could try and win a another event the next week. It's just a lot of SPG. Having said that, I did say I was going to try and go to Articon this year for the first time since 2017. Um, so maybe I can be embarrassed by doing worse than you at Articon and or sound like a great predictor when I have totally smash it because I said I would. But yeah, I'll that's not that fun. Guys. If I'm going to Articon, definitely reach out and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll get some comedy bet going. Probably not actual money because I'm poor as hell, but uh maybe some sort of forfeit could be fun poor as hell but we'll pay the three to four hundred pounds required to go to Articon. is it that much i don't think it's that much last time i checked it was like 80 quid for a ticket plus hotel plus transport okay why is that 300 pounds because you've got to stay in the hotel no you don't so i've, I've fixed your whole problem there i think yeah all right i'm down dave let's go uh... <laughs> i'm down dirty any heroics gonna win the team championship yeah. Uh, maybe that's, that's day confirming his transfer for next year 
<laughs> I mean, I have played for any heroics before, so it's not like there's no precedent for that. <laughs> uh, Duke yeah, no, Van S says something oh, random. Big. I believe that's well played, that Dirk. Dirk. I don't know. It, it might could be, be Dirk. It's We're a big fans of Dirk. Duke. It is. Dirk? Dirk. Dirk from Guardians Discord. No, that's not Dirk. Dirk is literally uh, his name is on YouTube. Um, don't stop yeah. assuming that people that you don't know are people that you do know. Dirk, he's, he's, he's got a D and a K in his name. He's got a, a D band. and a K. It has to be the one guy that I know. <laughs> no. Thank you, Dick Van. I was hoping someone would say that. that yeah, wasn't me the too. JP one, that You're the real bad. winner here. You're the real winner. Well, he's not getting the prize sent to him. That goes to the only JP. I just see uh, the next comment. Yeah. <laughs> I know, this is great. I didn't see this. <laughs> uh, I'll I'll let you read it out then, Stephen. Uh, Master Ball UK six seven eighty says lots of oh. dick not being blown on this episode. Great podcast as always. Chitter chitter chitter. I'm what very glad comment. that you signed off correctly there. As yeah, that's good. Should do. A lot of people have <laughs> um, forgotten to do that. Um, uh, this is in reference to Dave talking about shooting lists and blowing people's dicks <laughs> off. I think. Um, yeah, I like that turn of phrase, but I do realize it's possibly a bit jarring. For yeah. some people who don't say it. Like Ali um, King. Ali King just hates swearing of all types. Although specifically, I think he doesn't like you swearing, Stephen. I think he's think I think he thought it sounded awkward. Mm, fair enough. It's because he's like my weird adopted father. In that he's yeah. weird, I'm probably adopted, and <laughs> I call him daddy. Banger. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> chitta chitta to Master Balak. Yeah, chitta chitta to Master Bal. Master Ball. It's a Pokemon thing. Uh, Tom <gasps> Wait, so it is. 4254. It's literally a Pokemon logo as well. It says, I would be honoured if my Minus Morgul display board can be featured in your hobby segment once it's finished. Been listening to your podcast and battle reports while I was working on it. Tom, uh, find one of us on Facebook or drop an email to anyheroics at gmail.com, which I hope is still our email address. I can't remember. Um, with pictures yeah, no, of fine. your display board. Um, and we will do our best to feature it once it's finished. Um, Show it out if you finish it and throw it out. Yeah, because that sounds really cool. Um, Stu Art Macklin says, I see that both Dewey, Jay, and yourself, Dave, either accidentally or purposefully omitted any faction or army list for the Bubbles 100, <laughs> and others, like Jakob, omitted just the army list. Is this to gain a slight edge, like putting ruffians even when playing Dragon Emperor? Should we all start following this trend, or Tio's enforce full and correct army lists at events on Longshanks? I think if you're going to play an event on Longshanks, you should put your thing up accurately. Yes. Yeah. Um, the only reason that I didn't put mine up for Bubbles was because I forgot. So I was I was registering at a moment when I, it was like a last minute thing. I had to register before a certain deadline and I didn't have time to find my army list because at that time I didn't have it written down anyway it was only in the because Matt uh, Matt King does his army list submission via a Google form so I, ha I would have had to dive into my emails to find it and pull it out and copy paste it so at that moment I was just like no I'm just gonna hit I'm just gonna register so I'm in there and I can go back to it later but when I tried to come back to it on the Saturday morning because the event had technically started it wouldn't let me so that's why I didn't do it I can't speak for anyone else uh, I do not approve of putting in false information in this as well. I would say yeah. like, I don't like like I I think the Longshanks ratings are hi highly flawed anyway. Like they don't tell the whole story. They don't. There's don't a lot you of take that away from them, me, Dave? But they <laughs> like the fact that you can just create a tournament and just say that you won it or won a bunch of games, or you can do it for like your personal leagues and stuff. Like I don't think that's bad. I think it's a useful feature, but that will always mean that the faction and the scores and stuff don't really mean a whole lot. But it does take away data and information from the, the stat nerds out there like myself who want to look at them and try and figure stuff out and read the list. So like, for example, Adepticon, we would never have been able to do that if the top players hadn't been, you know, put their lists in there, you know? So I understand why people don't because it's like, don't give people five, five days or however long it is before the event that they release them to look at them. But at the same time, it's like, if you really need that edge, like, I don't want to say grow up, but like if you really need the edge of people not being able to see your list for four days, like were you even in contention anyway? I honestly think that the way it should be done, and obviously this is just my opinion, is the morning of the event, 
all army lists are made public. Yeah. All factions made public, and everyone mm. must have their list in it. And the reason yeah. why is because back in the day, you used to have uh, you used to have to print your army list out, or at least in the UK yeah. community, you used to have to have a printed copy of your army list. Back in my day. Usually two copies, sometimes three. One to give to the TO so they could check it, one to give to your opponent, and a spare one. The spare one's just if you're prudent. Now, nowadays, it's just you submit your list, and then you say to your opponent, would you like to see my list? Sometimes, usually they say no, because... I'm a scrub and it doesn't matter what my list is. My opponent's probably beating me. Um, but really, if if your opponent's list is on long shanks, they can just go, okay, I'm playing this person, click the versus button, click the list button. Ah, that's exactly what I'm playing against. And that's how it should be. We have this yeah, tool. I mean, we should be using it. I think if we're going to use the tool at all, I think you should, you should suggest that. I mean, for example, City of Steel, Ali did specifically say you should... Um, you, you should, if you're we're using long shanks and you have to put in your list on long shanks and you have to put the correct faction, he did say that. Yeah, and I like that. One thing I would say is long shanks, especially for a tournament like City of Steel, where there's very limited combined list building, the fact that the factions show up as a whole before the tournament, before lists are released, is a problem because it means that if you're the last guy submitting a list, say for example, I had. 20 lists available to me which is an exaggeration but say i had a whole ton of different lists and i'm like well this will be good for into that army this will be good into that army if there's too much lothlorian i can't play this that and the other and i look and i see oh there's only three lothlorian players i'm being i'm essentially benefiting from being the last person to submit a list which i think is the logic people use when they talk about not wanting to submit their true list they want to put in variants of canned or whatever so that or um sharky's rogues so that people think oh that's not a real list, but they're doing it to shield what their true list actually is. I, yeah, think, um, I think I think that's not correct. There's also something to be said for people should just click the hide your faction until uh, the TO releases it button. Yeah, I mean, but that doesn't stop the total factions from showing up. It doesn't um, matter what you do, yeah. even if your faction is hidden, the total number of factions, so you don't know who's got what, but you can still see that there's five Lothlorians. Yeah, right. I've got you. I've got you. you I know, know the bit you mean. Like, yeah. and or like, you know, there's ten Mordors and five Angmars or something. You know roughly what's going to be in those lists. So again, if you're submitting last, you have a huge advantage. I mean, ah, huge. It's not a huge advantage, but it is an advantage because you have a rough idea what those lists are going to look like. Especially at an omni faction event when none of the factions have allies or very few of them will. You can see an Isengard list and know roughly what's going to be in it. Like, it can really only be crossbow spam with a bomb or ballista and or maybe a list with saruman if you're feeling fruity but it's like you know that there's going to be oh look there's five isengards therefore there's five players probably playing a crossbow spam list what you're like, saying that's Dave, information this is yeah. Ali but, fault. no it isn't i think <laughs> the fact that i think longshanks should just get rid of that that feature because if you can't if you're not if the if the, if the things aren't aren't currently visible you shouldn't be able to see the factions and that would immediately fix this and yeah. then you literally don't have to change anything else just hide the factions until everything's released on the day of and then yeah then tos can say all right you have to put your faction in accurately or as accurately as you can obviously in good versus evil it's a bit misleading because long shanks doesn't differentiate so if you say this is my good side this is my evil side also hypothetically you could have two three-way yellow alliances and then you physically can't put them all in because it only lets you put in four factions or you could have, like Jakob did in Northern Ireland last year, you could have a seven-way alliance, which won't go in there either, obviously, because you're going to have four factions. So right. yeah, that... Yeah, Before Dave issue. loses his voice from ranting, let's cover the final comment from the Golems Gamers saying, consent to a 1v1 in reference to our 1v1. basketball challenge. That can and will be arranged. Also, uh -huh. you versus Jakob, as man that boy can play. Yeah, I mean, if he can play basketball, he can play better than me. My basketball is horrendous. Basically, the only thing I can do that's worthwhile is before I injured my leg, I could dunk a basketball. That's it. If someone passed it to me, I could dunk it. But that is not necessarily possible anymore. I don't know. I haven't done a lot of high jumping since I ruptured my ACL. GBHL dunk contest win. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I'd love to. I mean, Elliot would probably enjoy being the shit out of me at, at 1v1. Um but yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd do it. It's the only thing you can actually beat people at. Yeah. It'd, be, it'd, be a fun, it'd be a fun cultural exchange where 
we could play a game. We could play a, a best of three. We could play SPG first. We could play basketball, and then we could do something that we're equally good at. Chess. That's rude. <laughs> I am terrible at chess, and I, you're assuming that Elliot is also terrible at chess. There, I guess. Yes. It would wouldn't surprise me if he wasn't a top chess player. That's hopefully not too mean. <laughs> it's been Magnus Carlsen all along. <laughs> I mean, that would be funny. I'd be impressed. Right. I think that brings us to a close. I, I hope that wasn't too mean. Yeah. Um, thank you, everybody, for coming to listen or watch or uh, maybe look through my window while I'm filming this so you can watch it live. Um, remember to there. comment, like, share, subscribe, support your Hobbit hobby. Uh, go check out the other various content providers we've suggested, like Into the West, Columns Gamers, etc. Uh, scan the QR code or click the link in the description for our affiliate link to, in, uh, I was about to say Into the West, uh, Firestorm Games, who host the wonderful Into the West tournament. Um, yeah, yeah. And until next time, stay chittery, everyone. Please stay chittery. We need that. Chitter- stay chittery, <laughs> San Diego. Scratch your balls, people. I'm actually scratching the underside of my cock.